John Jones was out for three years, uh, various different situations. I'm not going to really get into you know, some, some was uh, PEDs and things like that. Um, but now he's back and at a, uh, let's say a pretty opportune time because the UFC struggling right now in the uh, heavyweight division. They've just lost their big name, Francis Ngannou. Um, so they had this vacancy now of the, the title. So John Jones comes in and they give him a first crack at the title. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about. So I just, I think that it's kind of, not that I, not that I think that John Jones isn't a great fighter and deserving of maybe a title shot. I just don't think you leave the organization for three years and you walk back into a title shot. Now he's the heavyweight champ and you know, there was a lot of guys in the division, I'm sure, that were waiting or chomping at the bit to get to get a shot at that and have been putting the the work in. So I just think it's kind of a it's a little bit of a bullshit move on the UFC. And again, no slight to John Jones. I think he's amazing. I think he's pound for pound one of the best fighters ever. Um, I just think you you should have to fight one. You should have to fight a ring rust fight when you come back after three years to, just to see if you're the real deal. Like, um, you know, even though. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody kind of knew he was. I mean, I was I was betting he was going to... I actually bet he was going to win in the second round um, by a stoppage, but turns out he won in the first round. So uh, anyways, but then there was some, uh, there was some shit talking. Now, there's two tweets that I'll, I'll go into here uh, if they load up. Um, there was one where he talks about... Um, where he talks about Nganu. So here, somebody asked him, they said, John, do you think a fight against uh, Francis Ngannou will be possible in the future? He says, I ha this is uh, John Jones. I highly doubt it, especially after that first performance. Like I said, the dude left for a reason. Came up with every demand and request in the world. He knew that UFC wasn't going to, going to bend. He fought his way out. So, or found his way out, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that fully. Um, I mean, it, okay, it's, a, it's an angle. Uh, I don't think I think he's right about the fact that I don't think he's going to come back and fight him. I think he's done with the UFC. Um, but I don't think Ngannou's. I, I think he would have fought him if if uh, they could have worked something out with the UFC. Um, so I, I think that's kind of that's kind of like a little dig on John Bones' part, which I or John Jones, I call him Bones, uh, on John Jones' part, which is kind of in my in, in my opinion. Uh, okay, so my only problem with John Jones is that one time he fled from the scene after crashing into a pregnant woman. Yeah, that's pretty shit. It's a pretty shitty thing to do. Um, I don't, and again, I don't think, I'm not really a proponent of John Jones as a person. I don't really, like his personal life, eh, I don't really, uh, I'm not really into it or anything. I, I don't typically care about anybody's personal life, uh, in, in this sphere, right? Somebody who's a fighter or something, I don't give a shit. Uh. I don't care what your political views are. I don't care what you do on the weekends. I just care when you show up in the Octagon that you fight your ass off. So the thing I liked about John Jones is he's, or I do like about him is he's just dominant and he's probably going to dominate pretty well at the, at the heavyweight if he can get himself uh, right with the weight game. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if he's going to, I don't know if you can change, a leper can change their, uh, their spots, if you will. So I think he'll probably get in trouble again. And now I'm freezing up here. I'm trying to get to the second tweet. Um, and so, so if you do watch the UFC, you'll know that uh, uh, Daniel Cormier is one of the um, commentators from the side. Um, and most fights, anyway. Uh, it's like Joe Rogan. And uh, so here's what somebody said about that. They said, the fact that Daniel Cormier looked like he was about to cry made that victory even more I I iconic. You are the best, John. And so John Jones responds, my man couldn't even pretend to smile. It was pretty funny. Asking what happened, uh, asking what happened, an experienced former champion and analyst suddenly not being able to identify a guillotine. I, I agree with that statement. Like, but I watched the fight and it was tough to see that he had a, a tight guillotine in because he, if, you've, if you saw that fight, you'll see that the way he had him, it didn't look like his neck was locked in there. But John Jones is 250 pounds or whatever the heck he went in, strong as a motherfucker. He doesn't really need as much as someone like me or someone smaller that would need, you know, to actually have the neck cinched 
to get a good crank on on a, on a guy's head. And that's basically what I think he did. He just kind of cranked his head to the point where um, where uh, Ganya was just gonna gonna tap just from sheer discomfort. Essentially, I don't even know if he put him out necessarily, but you know, I couldn't imagine being squeezed by a 250 pound guy who knows how to squeeze a neck. So I, you know, I agree. I, I agree with that, but at the same time, maybe from his vantage point, he couldn't see. But there's definitely a, uh, there's definitely a, a, you know, a very known hatred between uh, DC and John Jones. So I, I don't, uh, I'm not surprised by that. 